When you think of needles, your mind might jump to either the operating room or the sewing kit tucked away in a drawer. But while both the surgical needle and the sewing needle share a pointed tip and a similar shape, their design, purpose, and construction are vastly different. And understanding these differences reveals the fascinating ways in which form follows function. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how surgical needles and sewing needles differ, not just in what they do, but in how they're built, the precision behind their design, and why you wouldn't want to mix them up. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the sewing needle a tool as old as civilization itself. Archaeological evidence shows that needles made of bone and ivory were used as far back as 50,000 years ago. Today's sewing needles are typically made from high carbon steel wire that's heat treated for strength and coated to resist corrosion. They are designed with a pointed tip at one end and an eye at the other for threading. A sewing needle is meant to pierce fabric and guide thread through various textiles without damaging the material too much. Depending on the task, whether it's embroidery, hand quilting, or heavy-duty canvas work, sewing needles come in different lengths, thicknesses, and shapes. However, all sewing needles share a similar straightforward design. Their job is to create a clean hole through fabric and help pull thread from one side to the other. Their tips are sharp, but not scalpel sharp, and their shafts are smooth to glide through layers of material. Now contrast that with the surgical needle. At first glance, it might resemble a sewing needle, but don't be fooled. A surgical needle is a highly specialized tool engineered with the human body in mind. While it also pulls thread through a material, in this case skin, muscle, or even internal organs, its design prioritizes precision, minimal tissue trauma, and control. Surgical needles are usually made from surgical grade stainless steel and must meet rigorous standards for sterility, durability, and sharpness. They're often curved instead of straight, allowing the surgeon to make fine, controlled sutures in tight or deep spaces. The curve of the needle works hand-in-hand -hand with a needle holder, a clamp-like surgical tool that gives the surgeon maximum control in placing each stitch. This isn't about moving thread through fabric. This is about stitching living tissue with minimal harm. One of the most important differences lies in the point of the needle. Surgical needles come with different tip types depending on the tissue being sutured. A cutting needle, for example, has a triangular point that can slice through tough tissue like skin. A taper point needle, on the other hand, has a round, gradually narrowing point that pushes through delicate tissue like intestines or blood vessels without cutting it. This level of detail is crucial in reducing patient trauma and ensuring healing. The hole created by a surgical needle must be as small as possible to prevent bleeding and scarring. Meanwhile, the sewing needle's point is generic, designed to pass through dead material like cloth, and its goal isn't to preserve living tissue, but to hold fabric together. Another difference lies in how the thread is attached. In sewing, the needle has an eye through which the thread is passed manually. The eye can be relatively large, and sometimes getting the thread through can be a bit of a struggle, especially if your eyesight isn't what it used to be. Surgical needles, in contrast, are often swagged, meaning the suture material is pre-attached to the needle by the manufacturer. The thread is fused to the needle in a way that forms a seamless join, reducing drag as it moves through tissue. This design prevents the thread from detaching mid-surgery and also reduces infection risks by eliminating nooks where bacteria could hide. 
It's also worth noting that surgical needles are usually single-use, while sewing needles are made to be reused many times. Durability and sterility are also major points of difference. A sewing needle can live in a pincushion or a box for years. It can bend, rust, and dull over time, and while that might be annoying, it's rarely dangerous. A surgical needle, on the other hand, must be absolutely sterile, perfectly sharp, and disposed of after one use. The stakes in the operating room are high. Blunt or contaminated instruments can lead to infection, complications, or worse. That's why surgical needles come individually packed in sterile containers, ready for a single precise job. Ergonomics and grip also play a role. Sewing needles are designed to be manipulated by hand, which works perfectly for tasks like mending clothes or embroidery. But surgical needles are used with instruments, not fingers. Surgeons use needle holders or forceps to control the needle's angle and pressure. This difference is reflected in the body of the needle itself, which may be grooved or textured in subtle ways to help lock it in place while the surgeon works. Every slight feature is designed to maximize control in a highly sensitive environment. Then there's the context in which each needle is used. A sewing needle operates in the relaxed atmosphere of home or a tailor shop. Mistakes can usually be undone, but a surgical needle is used in life or death scenarios under bright operating room lights surrounded by a team of focused professionals. Every stitch with a surgical needle has consequences, whether it's closing a wound, repairing a torn artery, or attaching a transplant. The margin for error is razor thin. So, while both tools are technically needles, the similarities end there. The sewing needle and the surgical needle are products of two entirely different worlds, one of textiles and craftsmanship, the other of anatomy and healing. One deals with fabric that can be unstitched and redone, the other with living tissue that must be treated with the utmost care. Each needle has evolved alongside its respective industry, shaped by the needs and challenges of its environment. It's a great example of how a simple tool can diverge in design when applied to very different problems. In the end, the next time you thread a sewing needle to patch up a shirt or hem a pant leg, Remember that somewhere in an operating room, a surgeon is using a very different kind of needle to stitch something far more delicate, a person's body. Two tools, one name, countless differences, and an incredible story of how we've adapted a basic concept into two highly specialized instruments that save clothes and lives alike. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.